Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod. I'm here to talk about week four of Big Brother 25. Let's find out how everything went on Cameron's HOH Reign of Terror. And at the end of the video, I'll be updating my rankings based on how everyone's doing in the game. So let's dive into it. We got our Sunday episode right into the much awaited pressure cooker competition and there was no glass cage. And I thought about this, I decided I don't mind it. Obviously with 20 years, we're gonna have to change some things. So most of the house guests are competing in the HOH. Felicia is us, the fans watching the pressure cooker live but she has no feed cuts, she gets the whole thing. I'm very jealous. Obviously we get to watch it live on the live feeds, but the feeds cut out every time someone slips off their button, so what's the point? Not showing this whole thing is Felicia cleaning the whole kitchen. I was more entertained by the Felicia cam than I was with the competition. We find out that Cam and Red's alliance is called the Chillers. This is an all-time bottom tier pair with an all-time bottom tier alliance name. What are you, killers? Are you murderers? Are you giving off serial chiller vibes? Sari lists her alliances. She said her main alliance is for real, for real, which was interesting to me because that was a very new alliance and I kind of thought it was fake, but Izzy and Felicia are in all of her alliances. They're also in the Seven Deadly Sins in the Legend 25 alliance that Sari says is completely fake. Izzy says, I'm in the pressure cooker with the chicken because Jag is dressed like a chicken. Still, Felicia clones herself sitting on the couch. Cameron starts telling his insufferable stories. It reminds me a lot of Christian Hubicki on Survivor during an endurance competition, just sucking the energy and soul out of your competitors by telling nonstop boring stories stories. Jared gets out first. His prize is some snakes in the middle of the challenge. Who cares about this? They're just in the middle of the room. Like, you might as well be at the zoo. They should have released them or released some mice to crawl around on their feet. Sari gets out and she wins some beer. Not shown is Jared drinking all the beers and then getting a little wasted. America can't get Corey off her mind in the pressure cooker. Flashback to them flirting in the hammock. They are smitten kitten, it seems. Izzy is dancing around foolishly and slips up. She wins concert. Loud rock music that sounds like the Swedish chef. Then Bowie gets out. She wins a pressure cooker. Very funny, Mr. B. Matt seems to be the only person who throws the challenge. He wins flies. The editors have a creative feel day editing the sound of flies buzzing around and people swatting at the flies. The reality is all of the flies were dead by the time that they were released. They just fell to the ground like Asia O'Hara's butterflies. Red literally falls over. He is heartbroken. He wins a home theater and a year of Paramount Plus with Showtime, which I, I think is a really great prize. Corey is a have not and he has to pick two people to join him. They'll be having PB and J. This prize and punishment system would be a lot better if they could pick an envelope at random and not just be assigned an envelope. Also throughout the show, we get no segment of them eating PB and J or any flashbacks of people eating PB&J in the past, so what's the point? Just let them eat, make him eat one PB&J sandwich in there. Blue is out next and wins $1,000, and it's better than $0, but also Mr. B, like, where's the budget? Jag is sleep standing, he jolts awake and is out. He wins perfume, which means sewage smell will be blown in. Mimi gets scared by a bug, which may or may not be the truth, and is out. She wins a dinner party for her and three house gets of her choice. Again, this entire dinner party would proceed to be not shown on the show, so what is the point? Give her Paramount Plus. Cameron tells America that she and Corey are safe, which is a pretty sweet deal. So America takes the deal, which probably made her look really shady to everybody else in the house, who was pretty much counting on her to win. So Cam wins HOH, boo his, nobody is happy about this besides his daughter Riley at home. He holds up his key and calls it this guy. Let's not gender the HOH key, Cameron. Then in case my stomach isn't turning enough, he gets the HOH key stuck in his hair. Yucky, yucky, yuck. Red notices that Izzy is unhappy that Cam won. America tells Corey about the deal. He appreciates it. Cam tells Jack and Blue they'll be nominated. Blue says, girl, please. So he nominates them and that's the end of the Sunday episode. Jumping into the Wednesday episode, Cam starts off saying Legend 25 is his truth. Blue says, I'm a spicy bitch, so I will not go down without a fight. Per Blue cries to Jared in the bathroom. I never see these moments of Blue actually caring about being on Big Brother on the live feeds. But then I watch the show and I'm like, wow, Blue really loves Big Brother. She loves to be there. America, Corey talk about about Cam's deal with sexy music in the background. Why? Corey tells America that his brother is Zach from Survivor. We finally get a picture of Zach. It took a month. So hello, Zach. She later tells him that she has an Ivy League degree, which apparently is an even trade of information. Cam and Red strategize. These two talk all day and I never watch them on the feeds. There's always something else to watch other than Cam and Red, especially because I'm on Felicia Watch 24 seven and they're never in a room with Felicia. So I'm never watching what they're doing. You're gonna have to tune into Cam and Red updates on a different channel for that. But we find out that they're aware that Suri is the and Felicia are running the game, so they're aware of the obvious. Cam wants to use Izzy as a replacement nom, and this seemed to be a really serious plan that he had, but if he had Izzy up on the block against Blue or Jag, there was no way he can get the votes. There was one morning that I woke up and looked at my BB updates from when I was sleeping, and I was like, oh my gosh, Izzy's going home? And I was like, no, 
Nope, there's no way. Jack's chicken costume punishment finally ends. I feel like either this punishment lasted way too long or Cameron's HOH was the longest week of my entire life. He says, have you ever seen a chicken strip? Mm, Should have said, have you ever seen a chicken strip? But I'll forgive it. We get more sexy music while he strips out of his costume and a close up on chicken wings. I am somehow offended. We get some cartoon smooch sounds as Jag and Blue are under the blanket. I can do without these effects. And if you're going to use effective sound effects, why don't you give us the sound of spaghetti in a pillowcase being slapped against the wall? Because that'll be better for what's going on. Also not shown on the show is Jared cleaning up that couch with Lysol wipes, which we saw. Jared then tells Blue he's related to Felicia to test if Blue can keep a secret. She barely cares. And also how is this lie better than just telling her the truth? Somehow though, she still puts the pieces together in the diary room, probably with a lot of help from production. Cameron plots against Sari to Matt. Matt instantly rats this out to Sari. Then we get Corey and America snuggling. This was after the dinner that Mimi won that was not shown that I wanted to see. And not mentioned is that America is kind of tipsy during this. And this is also a steamier conversation than they made it seem on the show. So just when you think that the editors are being prudish, Izzy wants to throw some condoms at them, but Izzy can't find them. Felicia says they've been used. Felicia is on the case. She's looking for the prophylactics, but she can't find them. She says, whether it's the veto or some condoms, everyone is looking for some protection. And then she makes a face that I could only show as an image. The cameras keep pointing to Jared and Blue, and it's obvious that they're the ones who are using the condoms. Suri has no comment other than ew. Jared winks at the camera about the condoms. I am not laughing. So on from talking about the prophylic dicks. Red, Jared, and Mimi are picked to play in the veto. The veto seems to be based on an Indiana Jones tomb raid, where they're solving a balancing puzzle and then figuring out a word puzzle, and the answer is golden. This looks like a lot of fun, especially the balancing part. I could have used more balancing, less word puzzle. Blue seems to crush it, but she ends up not being even in the top three. The way that Cameron narrates his challenge is especially painful. Mimi's puzzle keeps falling, which doesn't seem to be part of the challenge's design. I think that she's just putting the pieces up wrong. Then Jared can't figure out the puzzle, so he spells out gondol and dongle and delong, elonged, angled and dongle, and then he eventually gets golden. And then Red crushes it. He says, if anyone can beat my score, I'll eat my hat. Izzy is reading the results. Is she supposed to be the host? Why did they have Blue introduce this challenge? So Red wins. I guess he won't have to eat his hat. He says, blang, blang. So Red decides not to use the POV. On to Thursday we go. On the Thursday episode, Julie is wearing an artistic, off the shoulders, flowy mishmash of stripes and silky black palazzo pants. And Julie can't always have the same stylist because sometimes she looks really chic and sometimes she just looks like randomized sim. So the episode starts with Cam telling Blue that she's safe. Blue is sad that her girly pop Jag is going home per. Jag complains to Sari and they all quickly flip in the episode, not because it actually quickly happens, but because the editors don't have time for this. Sari goes to tell Jared that he has to vote out Blue and he's not down for it, obviously. And Sari acts shocked that he doesn't want to vote out his girlfriend, which seems unreasonable. Like, obviously he wants to keep Blue. It's actually better for his game to keep Blue. Let's not be shocked. And they make it seem like Sari just quickly is like, all right, Jared's not down. Forget it. The whole plan's a mess. But this was like five or six days of internal debate that obviously can't fit on the show, but they really breeze over like it never happened. They get a transmission from the comic verse and Red reads it in a tie-dye crop top that would make Rupert Bonham moan. They find out that the top four in America's vote will be competing for power. Before the power competition, Julie goes out into the crowd again, her new trick, but nobody turns around to look at her except one guy. The top four end up being Sari, Corey, Matt, and Jag. And the challenge is a snake table maze. Part of it made me think, okay, this is a survivory challenge. They obviously knew Sari would be in the top four. Maybe the producers kind of intended for Sari to win this, but Sari ends up doing the worst out of the four and Matt ends up winning the power. Matt goes to Sari for advice because he's not sure how to use the power. And they talk about using it this week, which I didn't know that they were talking about this. And as a viewer, I genuinely don't know who will go home this week coming into the vote. But we get to the eviction. Blue and Jag's speeches are cute. They start voting. It's obvious that Jag is going. So Jag is evicted unanimously and the comic verse siren starts going off and it turns out the eviction is canceled. And this was nice. Sometimes with twists and rigory, it ends up being like, oh, why is this happening? This is a waste of time. But I genuinely feel like both the people on the block could have used a little bit more time to cook in the house. And Jag's reaction to being saved was so pure and so genuine. He had no idea any of it was happening. So it was just nice to watch. With that said, let's get into my updated rankings. I write these rankings down at the end of the Thursday episode. By the time that I post this, there's a new HOH. The game may have changed, but here's my rankings. At number 13, I have Cameron. So Cameron came into this week at the bottom of my list. If anyone in the house won HOH besides him and Red, he was going to be on the block. And you would think that someone would take their HOH as an opportunity to get into the house dynamics, shake things up, get to a place 
place where you're in a little bit of a better standing, but he's so far out of the loop and not even because he's bad at the game, but because nobody wants to play with him. So the effect that his HOH didn't improve his standing at all, if anything, it made him more of a target. And then the fact that both the people he nominated ended up staying in the house really is just not looking good for him. On to Red, who is 12th and was 12th. Honestly, same thing as Cameron. In the exact same boat, he won the power of veto, which only paints a bigger target on his back. He's actually extremely passive aggressive and communicates very strangely with the other house guests. I don't think that Cameron and Red will both be the next two people to go. I think something will happen to save one of them at some point and get them to jury. The only reason that Red is higher than Cameron is that Red has always been a little bit more ingrained in the power structure in the house than Cameron, but I definitely think one of the two of them will go home this week. On to number 11, who for me is Jag. Last week, Jag was number 10. I feel like this week really showed to me that Jag doesn't have the strongest grip on what's going on in the house. He was in a position where he was on the block and his game was at risk and he had some information he could have used to save himself over blue, but maybe because they're friends, he decided not to pull the trigger on the information that he had, which ended up in him almost being evicted if there wasn't a twist. So based on the fact that he was literally evicted, I don't have much faith in him as a strategist anymore. And I think after Cameron and Red are out of the way, Jag is the next target for the big alliance. At number 10, I have Blue, who was eighth last week. The reason why I had her so high last week is I felt like out of the big alliance, Sari would give Jared one person that he could bring along a little bit further. And it seemed to me as the week went on that Suri is going to cut blue whenever Suri wants to cut blue. And it's not gonna matter what Jared has to say about it. I'm realizing that the vibe of this week's ratings is it's just a list in order of who Suri wants out for the most part in the order that she would want them out because it's Suri's world and we're just living in it. And number nine, I have Bowie who was 11th last week. And Bowie's a tricky person to rank because I feel like she has no shot to win the game. She's very disliked and disrespected. She does try to play the game, but nobody wants to hear it. She doesn't realize it, but the only people looking out for her right now are Cameron and Red and they're going to be gone soon so I'm curious to see what she would do after they're gone but if Sari is saying that for real for real is her number one alliance then everybody outside of it is pretty much toast and she's the last person I have here on my piece of paper. At number eight on my list I have Izzy who was seventh and is always kind of floated in the middle of this ranking around the same place. The thing with Izzy is I've always seen her as the first one out out of Sari, Izzy, and Felicia and Cameron and Red are about to be pissed and they can win competitions. I could see a situation where Cameron or Red survives, wins HOH, nominates Izzy and Felicia or Izzy and Suri, and Izzy just is voted out. Especially because even last week when they thought that Izzy was in on their plans, they literally hate her. In seventh, I have America who was sixth last week. I feel like America is just playing a very risky game where if she can get far enough with Corey, maybe they can win out, but even still, he would beat her in a jury vote. I feel like she has a lot of things stacked against her, but she is also capable of changing tides and she has been keeping herself afloat and keeping herself above water, constantly bringing herself back into a fold when things aren't going her way and getting from a negative place to a neutral place. My concern is with 66 days left, is that sustainable or will she fall into a negative place? Or could she ever get herself into a positive place in the game? Her biggest path to success would be exactly what happened this week. Cameron winning HOH and taking a big shot at the other side of the house. Unfortunately, he didn't take the shot that would benefit America. And she did put him in a place to do the things that were beneficial for her game. So more of that. She would need more of that. But for now, in sixth, I have Jared, who was fifth. It's really hard for me to judge his game because it's hard for me to separate his bad social decisions in the house with his good gameplay. If Sari wasn't there, he would be terrible at this game. He would be spending all his time with Blue. He would completely fall out of the loop of all the information but Sari is there and his existence in the house is very privileged and because of that he's going to get really far and he'll have his mom on the jury to advocate for him so these are all really good things that are always going to keep him towards the top as long as Sari is still there. The biggest negative is his attraction to the wrong side of the house. The biggest positive for him is that he stood up to the whole house and protected Blue and prevented her from going home. That shows lots of sway in the house and Blue is a guaranteed jury vote for him. So obviously he needs her in the jury. At number five, I have Corey who was second last week. I feel like the second I posted my video, Corey's game started tanking. He was in a really good place with Sari, but during the pressure cooker competition, they started talking about him and Sari and the gang are really on to him and his antics, which doesn't give him a lot of breathing room to actually do any antics, which ends up putting him in the same position as America where he may get far in the game, but at that point he would have to win out. Definitely not masterminding things the way that I thought he was. In fourth, I'm putting Felicia, who last week was fourth as well. And this week, I feel like she did what she really needed to do. She went back to being a civilian. And this week, it was nice to see her HOH-itis go away. She was back to cooking, cleaning, laughing. The best thing about Felicia, which keeps her consistently as number four, number five, is she's always involved in the strategy and she's very dedicated to the game. She's consistently been in a good place, but she's never gotten complacent in her place. And she's always trying to be part of the game conversations. Also this week, she made some delicious looking pork chops. She 
brushed her teeth into all kingdom come and she said 75 more days of this bullshit in third i have matt who was ninth last week and he's made the biggest improvement by far in these rankings over time he's constantly been clawing his way up the list and it's because he's getting deeper and deeper and deeper into Ceri's heart and her mind he's kind of like the orphan annie to Ceri's daddy warbucks he went he toured the mansion she said oh i kind of like you you want to stay for the holidays and then the holiday trip became a lifelong adventure telling Ceri about the power was probably the best thing that he ever did because Ceri loves information and through this power it gave Ceri the means to execute the first big move of the season she's been dying to play and make big moves every week she's trying to flip the vote just to leave her legacy just to make some stuff happen and this finally gave her the means to do something in the game with little risk also Corey said it best that everybody loves Matt and wants Matt to be part of their alliance including him so who's targeting Matt nobody who's bringing him along everybody he's in a great place in second I have Mimi who was third and has always been towards the top of this list the way I do my rankings I only move people down or up if they do something particularly good or bad and Mimi stays towards the top of my list because she's in she's in the in groups she's always been in the in groups she hasn't needed to weasel her way or work her way into anything because she's always been a part of it people in her groups talk about her sometimes because she's not bringing them enough information but then soon enough she'll bring them some information and they'll stop talking about her so she's definitely one to watch I would be surprised if she's voted out any time soon she's weaseling her way to the end of the game and we know that she's competent at challenges if she makes it to the final five with the people that she's trying to go to the final five with she can just win out make it to the final two and potentially win i think that's her plan and until she needs to she's just chilling and finally at number one i do have sari who is running the house she's the matriarch of the fields family crime syndicate she is daddy warbucks truly nothing goes down in that house without sari's permission worth noting also this week of all four weeks was probably sari's best gameplay there weren't a lot of moments where i was like oh my gosh I'm worried about Suri. The plan that she's trying to execute is going to backfire and blow up in her face. So if there was a super one, I would give it to Suri this week. It's quite clear that Suri is just running circles around these other players because of her experience. And I would love to see her on an all-star season of Big Brother or on a season of Big Brother with all other Survivor legends to see how she would perform against people who are a little bit more worthy of competing against her, which kind of inspires me on a video idea. I think I'm going to make a video of my ideal cast for an all Survivor player season of Big Brother. So expect that soon. I'll do that when I have time. So I'll be back next week to recap week five of big brother 25 don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss it i hope you have a great week and thanks for listening bye